what kind of um what 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 awakened you what 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 brought the 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 red pill awareness to you uh, as far as um you know it changing your whole outlook on life and yeah. realizing that these uncomfortable truths that was that was late in life for me it was uh because i was 38 39 or so when i got divorced it was definitely late late 30s started dating right away uh then got involved in a three-year ltr with a single mommy with two kids which was a total like mess and that's what red pilled me was that that was like i was around 43 and i'm like this is this is messed up like i was just i was it was like my entire life i was just looking back at it at like 43 and i'm like how is it that women are not what i've been told that they're supposed to be they're not sugar and spice and all things nice they don't behave in a way that's you know congruent with all the disney movies that i've consumed my entire life and it was just like one thing after another it's like it was like dominoes started to fall and it was like you just had to follow the entire path the dominoes kind of like leading down i'll tell you where it all started for me i was on yeah. a men's retreat with a bunch of guys and i was talking to this guy tom who uh who was the guy that introduced me to um you know the red pill with the rational male and you know we're just shooting the shit about relationships and he's like dude you really gotta like read rollo tomasi's book the rational male and i'm like all right done oh you know it's I'll take whatever recommendation you got because I'm out of my own shit right now. Like I'm out of my own material. So what do you got? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, I downloaded the audiobook and I listened to it on the flight back. I was I was in Spokane, Washington. We were at this um guys thing. There's about 30 guys at Ben Greenfield's house and we were doing this biohacking, all this kind of cool shit. But yeah, like I listened to this thing on the flight back and uh I was just like, wow, that was that was deep. I gotta I gotta go through that again. And I went through the book like two or three times before I even started talking about it. But even but even prior to that, like I was still talking about some relationship stuff on my channel. I remember somebody once said about six or 12 months prior to that, they're like, you should do a video on the kind of women to avoid dating. And that was kind of a red pill video before I was even red pilled. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. I didn't know that. So you were, you were putting out like that type of content before you actually like fully awakened. Yeah. Like I started to see, you know, the reality of certain behaviors and I was like, Okay, there's a consistent pattern to be like if you date single moms, which you're going to end up doing if you get divorced at 39, you don't know shit like I did, <laughs> then you, you're going to go out with enough of them to be like, okay, there's a consistent pattern here of some serious BS. I'm just firing at the blog talk. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, yeah, there's a, like a consistent pattern of some serious BS here that I gotta that I gotta get some clarity on. It's like you know making some clips on that, which really seemed to resonate well with a lot of guys. That was just the start. Like that was a catalyst for me. You know what I mean? Are you still muted, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, Where no, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, no, what I was gonna say was so that so the single mom experience is really what what Red Pill. What year was this? Was this around 2015, 2016? Uh, I, I don't know. That we we split up 2015. That was about five years ago, I think. Mm, okay, yeah. okay, and. I guess, uh, and, and your you, show will go live in five seconds. And we're going to fire up the phone lines three, here, guys. Two, um, and we'll one. take the phone calls later on. You know what I mean? But uh, I'm just firing Not them up now. Radio. But <clears throat> anyway, so like I was saying, uh, so you read the book and you went over it like four or five times. And it's crazy, man, because like when guys, because I have a friend here uh, in Miami and, and what red pilled him was also a single mom. And he got it through Tom Likas and mm. he listened to Tom Likas. He listened to one of his broadcasts like three times in a row. It's like when you get the information, it's like, what? And then you like listen to it again and again and again. You're like, oh, my God. And it's like it, it's like this this moment because like, even because even like for me, I grew up in a, in a you know, uh, Arab Muslim household. So I had always kind of like known these truths because my parents had talked about it. Even my mom would tell me these these truths. And I always was like, what are you guys talking about? And then it wasn't into, until I like went out into the world and I saw how things really operate that I was like, oh, this is why they told me <laughs> to do things like this or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very, uh, very interesting. So, <clears throat> so you were with the girl for about five years. You changed your outlook. So like what changed when you, when you finally like uh, took the pill and you, you went on about your life? Like, did you just, have you just been like, I'm not going to uh date a uh, long-term relationship wise never live with a woman like did you, you did you live with this woman and everything like that no 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 we were and it wasn't five years it was only three um okay. we split up in uh 2015 so that so that was five years ago but um you know there was like talk of like uh living together and she was talking about marriage and shit like that and i remember mm -hmm. like early on um she brought up like marriage like within the first six or seven months i'm like um this is like before i you know was awake i'm like look 
I've got my shit sorted out. I got a kid from a prior marriage. I need to make sure that my estate is dispersed to where it needs to go. A prenup would need to be in place before I'd even consider that. And she mm. lost her shit, right? Like right away. Mm. So that's one of the tests that you got to use with women is the prenup talk. Um, you know, when it comes to venom and getting through the red flags, because if she's going to lose her shit over you saying, I want to protect my assets and make sure my kids get what's, you know, deserve it of them rather than giving it away to somebody else's kids or somebody else's life. Um, and they lose their mind over it. That's a pretty good indicator that you've got some problems coming your way. Um, but yeah, you know, there was talk of blending fam I, dude i didn't even know what the hell blending families was she kept saying this word blending families I'm like, this is <laughs> this is so bizarre why would i want to blend like put my family in a blender and blend it up with yours like yeah you know like invite your crap and mix it up with my stuff but yeah it's 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 really bizarre man a lot of guys get 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 super caught up in it like a lot of guys just get sucked into the vortex i mean one of the biggest problems that that guys choose to invite into their lives when I'm doing my coaching sessions with guys. Like when I do consults is they get wound up with single mommies, like bizarre how they'll, how they'll put them up on a pedestal, like worship them. And, you know, in all fairness, like I was kind of there myself too. Right. But when you react, like when you realize who you are, what your worth is a man and how your value has continued to go up over time, if you've done the work on yourself, obviously, and women, as time goes on, you know, past the age of their early twenties, their value goes down. There's a total disconnect. And a lot of guys don't realize that their value is considerably higher or it should be higher than what it is. And they should hold themselves to higher standards and have some dignity about the women that they're going to invite in their lives. But a lot of guys don't, they're just like, oh, you know, I can get scraps over here. Good. Let's go. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, Rich, I'm really glad you brought that up because, uh, that's how actually I discovered your content. Uh, I remember the first video I saw of yours, this was man, like maybe almost two years ago now was the, was the SMV vid video where you had the chart. And then you talked about how, uh, a man's value, like, uh, you know, as he gets older, it goes up while a woman simultaneously declines. And then you guys intersect right around that 30 years old. And that's when she's trying to, you know, lock you down because, women know on a, like an innate level that um, their values derive from their looks and youth and youth is a big part of that. And obviously they have a biological time clock as well. And that was kind of like an eye opener, like, oh, wow, like men, we don't adhere to the same mating timeline that women want. You know what I'm saying? Like if, nobody if, tells if, guys, this. Smart. nobody, nobody will sit a man down in his, in, in his 19th year and say, men, this is what you need to know about your value. And at the same token, most guys won't even want to hear it. I mean, if you try to sit most guys down, I bet you nine out of 10 guys, it'll be like in one out, in one ear and out the other, and they'll go chasing Becky down the road, putting her up on a pedestal. It's really only until they get older and they've, and they've matured and they really see like how bad choices can really affect them and erode their opportunities in life that they take shit seriously. Yeah, that was one of the biggest truth bombs. I, I remember I shared that video with so many of my friends, Rich. Like, I was just like, what? Like, because like in my head, I was like, this is so true because girls are always angling for some type of exclusivity with you as soon as they get older. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that's when you're getting older, start, your money's starting to finally come in. You're starting to do well. And I can't tell you how many guys I know, man, like uh, that got married in their late 20s to, to a girl that they went to school with. And in my head, I'm like, D -d -d you guys are idiots because your value is just trying to increase, you know, whereas like if you had asked that girl 10 years prior when she was 19, 20, hey, you want to get married? She would say, hell no, because she wants she's enjoying her time. So yeah. like nowadays, I, when I, even when I advise guys on consul, consultations, whatever, I tell them never adhere to a woman's dating timeline. If she tries to pressure you into like marriage or anything like that, never like, enter her frame ever, exactly. ever, ever, ever. It's 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 always got to be she has to she has to compliment your life and enter your frame. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up from from the get-go for a very very bad experience